Today's dish is about, can you guess? Yes, pasta, one of my favorite things to make and of course one of my favorite things to eat. But there is one particular pasta dish I will never make and I will never order at a restaurant and that is just plain old pasta with red sauce. The reason being, I eat the first bite, it's vibrant, it's al dente, it's wonderful. Second bite, mmm, still pretty good. Third bite, I've discovered nothing new and I'm eating not because I love the dish, but because I'm just plain old hungry. So I thought for today, I would make you a pasta dish that is vibrant, full of flavors, so many wonderful textures, and of course, copious amounts of Parmigiano-Reggiano right over top. Let's get started. The first thing I've done is I've put 16 cups of water and two tablespoons of salt, that's the ratio I love for pasta, in this and it's coming up to a boil. So I promised you texture in today's recipe, so this is exactly what we're going to get. Brown butter bread cups, okay? The way you do this is medium sized pan with medium heat, I'm going to add two tablespoons of unsalted butter. going to let this melt down. And what's going to happen with the butter is as it melts and sort of spreads out over the pan, it's going to start to foam up. Once that foam starts to subside, you'll see it start to brown around the edges. Give it a nice swirl so it browns evenly. At that point, you're going to start to smell this nuttiness and that is what we're going for when we add salt, pepper, and panko breadcrumbs. Let that toast for about 30 seconds to a minute. Stir it around for a little bit, make sure it doesn't burn, then we'll pull it off the heat and let that cool. Our pasta water is up to a boil. Now I've chosen spaghetti for this recipe because I love the texture and also because the timing of the sauce and the pasta comes out to be the exact same time, which is about 10 minutes. On the back of what we have here for spaghetti, it says 11 minutes, but I'm going to cook it for 10 to al dente, it's gonna finish cooking and all of this deliciousness that we're gonna put in this Dutch oven. Pasta is in, now let's move on to this Dutch oven of incredible flavors. First and foremost, medium low heat. There we are. Two tablespoons of unsalted butter, that goes in. A really good extra virgin olive oil. Same amount, two tablespoons. And it's this fat from the butter and the olive oil that carries all of these flavors. Well, what flavors? A little bit of heat is nice. So let's do just a pinch. I feel like heat, right? So a little more than a pinch? Okay. Uh, chili flakes. Also want to add a fair amount of garlic that we went ahead and just minced. Now it's true, 10 cloves of garlic is a lot of garlic. It's in pretty much an entire head. But what I like to do with garlic is just take my body weight and crush it with both hands, and that splits the whole thing open. I put it into a small bowl, cover it with a larger bowl, and then shake the bajiggers out of it. And you'll be amazed by how many just pop loose from their skins. And there you go. The easiest way to go ahead and pull the skins off of that much garlic. So the garlic is in. What else do we have? We have a large shallot, small dice. Also, I want the like vibrant but floral quality of lemon. Lemon zest actually fits that bill perfectly. That's about a little more than a tablespoon. One large lemon. You also want to season it, a little bit of salt. And freshly ground black pepper, of course. And I also want even a little bit more texture, but I want this texture coated with all the flavor that's already in this Dutch oven. And I have some cannellini beans that I've drained and rinsed, and they go in as well. Now I'm gonna give this a stir, and once in a while, occasionally, both the pasta and all the delicious ingredients in this Dutch oven. And after 10 minutes, I'm gonna pull the perfectly cooked pasta into the Dutch oven to continue and finish cooking. 10 minutes are up, so I'm gonna turn off both the water and this Dutch oven. Now is the time to add the pasta, but I'm not gonna grab the whole thing and put it in the strainer over the sink. No, no, we're gonna make it easier for ourselves. We're just going to, I mean, they're right next to each other. Just gonna pull the el dente, almost cooked pasta, into the Dutch oven. No hurry. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna add a full cup of this 
starch salted pasta water. I don't want to add just regular water because there's no starch, but this water actually has flavor and a little bit of body because of the starch from the pasta. In addition to this cup of water, I'm going to add the lemon juice from the lemon that we zested, which is three tablespoons of lemon juice. And what you'll see as I'm stirring this together is the pasta will actually absorb what is now very watery and get thicker and thicker and thicker, like a sauce. It's like magic. The pasta soaks up the rest of that liquid, and that's the secret of really good pasta. Don't cook it quite through all the way. Let the sauce continue cooking so it absorbs that. We add some flat leaf Italian parsley for vibrancy, a little bit of vivaciousness, freshness, and one packed cup of arugula because it's wonderful and it's peppery and has a little crunch in there. Give this a quick stir and believe it or not, <laughs> it's time to eat. I love this dish to be served family style, right from where it was cooked, right to the middle of the table. You can pass the bowls, let people help themselves. And then you also have some of those other love leads, the extracurriculars of this particular recipe that you can pass around as well. Holy moly, that looks good. Things like those brown buttered breadcrumbs for that extra crunch. Oh, <laughs> make extra, because this is, this is something that's just so wonderful. And speaking of wonderful, I grated some Parmigiano Reggiano. And if you pre-grate it, like say an hour ahead of time, have a lightly damp paper towel just to cover it up so it doesn't dry, okay? It doesn't dry out. That goes over top. More? Yeah, I agree, I think more. More is more when it comes to Parmigiano Reggiano. And that's the dish. It smells so wonderful. You've got the butteriness that I can smell, not from the butter, but actually from those breadcrumbs. That's what smells so lovely. Oh my gosh, big bite. Mm. This dish is so surprising, and I, and I mean that in the best of ways because it's not heavy, it's not gloppy, it's light, it's vibrant. It's because you've got that fresh lemon juice that wasn't cooked down because we added it at the end with that pasta water. But we have the floral quality as well with the lemon zest that we did add in the beginning. Garlic, but it's tame, it's actually sweet. A little, a little heat from the shallot and a little bit of the uh, chili flakes. Of course, the Parmigiano Reggiano, creaminess from the beans, and then the pasta is perfectly cooked. So we didn't cook it all the way, we cooked it al dente and finished cooking in that broth of love that we had. Needless to say, it came together in like 10, 11, 12 minutes. You can have dinner on the table, so much love, so much flavor, so much texture in every single bite. I guarantee when you make this dish, you will not be bored.